Hello everyone, today we're going to go through the process of updating OpenTX and more specifically we're going to do it for the jumper uh, because of that ExpressLRS module. And the main reason for the ExpressLRS purposes is that you want that packet rate to come up to that 500 hertz that it runs at. Now I'll caution you, it's very likely that you'll have to do this again. I'm going to be flashing a nightly to this radio, I've actually already done it once and I'll be walking you through the process. But it's a nightly, so those things change every, well, every night. And it's very likely, as I said, that you'll have to do this again. Or at least you'll probably want to. So if you want to get to that 500 hertz goodness and get that extra packet rate in the, your Express LRS, this is the way you need to do it. Now if by chance you have never connected your radio or Betaflight or anything else that might require the STM32 drivers, you do need to go to this page and I will put the links as they appear in the video down in the video description and we need to download and install this driver. Uh, we see the Git Software button here. This software will require you to register so we do have to hand over some information there. Uh, you can always use, uh, maybe you have a spam account that you might use for registration such as this. But uh, you click this Git software, you register, you download the software. I believe you get a link in an email. It's been some time since I've done it, but this may not be required. First suggestion would be to just see if it works for you before you download and install anything else on your computer. If you're using a Mac or a Linux machine, it's very likely that this will just work. You won't even need these drivers. If by chance you have any troubles with the drivers, download the Impulse RC Driver Fixer. This is also a great fixer when it comes to connecting to your flight controller and uh, Betaflight being able to connect to it. Uh, the first link here on the Google results takes us to Impulse's RC website and we see that we have the uh, download section and right here we have the impulse driver fixer now this is an exe and you just run this with your radio connected and it should correct the drivers after some time there are many other walkthroughs on updating open tx they may or may not include this i expect that joshua bardwell has probably got more than one so if there's something that you're looking to firm up you might want to hit one of those other videos. The next thing we want to do is we want to go to the OpenTX website and we want to go to into the download section, which is a little tab here that you can see I have downloaded. Now we have the full releases that are down here and you can see the latest release is of uh, January 8th of this year. But we're going to go down to and we're going to use the nightly build. This is going to download and install the OpenTX companion application. So if I click there, then we get all these different ones. We probably want to use the one that's most recent. So you would click on this companion Windows 3.2.1. If we go back a page, we can see that there's also Mac OS and Linux nightly builds as well. So you would want to download this. After it's downloaded, go ahead and save it, run it, install it and come back here. And as you can see the whole time, I've had the OpenTX Companion and note up here where it has the version number, we have that N511. So we've got the nightly, the N in that. And this is what we need in order to upgrade OpenTX that comes on the T-Lite in order to be able to get Express LRS and the 500 Hertz packet rate. What I'm gonna do that you can't see is there's a USB port on the top of the T-Lite. If you have one, that should be easy to find. And I'm going to plug in my USB-C cable. Now, if you have a bunch of other USB devices plugged into your computer, it's possible that you'll receive an error, not necessarily right when you plug in, but when we get to the flashing process. If you see too many DFU devices or some DFU error, you probably have another device that's plugged in that it's confusing it. So unplug those other devices. If you're going through a USB hub, as I do for most things that I have attached to my computer, Take your USB-C cable and plug it directly into your computer. That should solve that error. Next thing we want to do is we want to set up OpenTX Companion here. So we go into the settings, we go into the settings, and then we give it a name. I just type T-Lite, E-L-R-S, because this is a radio I'm using just for the purposes of Express LRS. And we see from the dropdown that we have the T-Lite. We also have a host of other radios. This could apply for other radios, but I am doing it right now for the Jumper T-Lite. In these check boxes, uh, for me and my purposes, uh, I just make sure that Lua is checked. We need that because we are going to download a Lua script for use for ExpressLRS in probably the next video or in a video coming up. And unless you fly helis or helicopters, uh, we could check that box for no heli. 
Now the next tab is the application settings. And here is where we want to select the nightly builds. Of course, it says unstable right there. Uh, you can change it to where it's just the stable releases or the testing releases. But in our case, because of the time of the recording of this video, in order to get that 500 hertz packet rate, we need to do the unstable builds, the nightly builds. And we've got an automatic backup folder already selected. And you can check this box if you want to do an automatic backup before writing to your radio. After we've got everything set, we just click OK. We've got a radio and we've taken OpenTX and we've told OpenTX that we're using a jumper T-Lite and some of those check boxes. And the first thing you probably want to do is you want to back up your radio. In those worst case scenarios where something were to go wrong, you've got a backup and you've got a way out. So with the radio on, if we plug in our USB-C cable, we get this menu. And we want to go down to where it says storage. Down, enter. That goes away, and you should see a USB drive appear on your computer. We've got two drives here. We've got this G drive for T Lite with some firmware files on it. We want to leave that alone. Don't touch that, so I'm just going to close it. Uh, this we can leave open. We're really not going to do anything with it at this point in time, so I'm just going to minimize it. Back here at the OpenTX Companion, we want to uh, read the model files. In my case, I only have one model file on this. And we can see that I've got it right here, and it's the Express LRS model file, because I've only been using this particular radio for Express LRS use. Now that we have this window active, we can go up to File, Save As. And you can see I've already got some backups here, so I'm just going to click this one, and then I'm going to take out the two, and I'm going to make it today's date. And I'm going to hit enter. Next thing I want to do is back up the radio. I'm going to go over here to this icon where it says backup radio to file. This will open a window and you can see it wants a bin or a hex file. And so I'm going to select this one and I'm going to change this to the express LR. Oops, can't type. LRS. Model file, of course, it will have the date modified of today as well, or you can add that into the file name yourself. We're going to hit save. It's going to read that stuff and it'll import it. The last step here to our backups is to back up the firmware. So I'm going to put it in my backup folder here. See, I've got other backup files in here. We're going to call this one T Lite. Press LRS, and then I'll go ahead and put today's date on it. Oops, can't type. And hit enter. Now we've done our backups, and we should be good to go to start the flashing process. Now, as you can see here, the radio is off. I'm going to press these two inner trim buttons. It's similar on other radios to where you might have to do a maneuver like this. Say you've got a Tyrannus or others, but again, what I'm doing here is very specific to the T light. I'm going to hold those two down as best I can while I plug in my USB port. We get nothing on screen. It doesn't respond. It doesn't act like anything. And you should not get a USB drive pop up on your computer. Click this download button. It will come up here and it'll say latest download and it'll give us the version. Of course, because we're on nightlies again, we still have that N511. You can click the check for updates, but I've already done this. <laughs> So this is the latest version, and we're going to click Download Firmware. It's going to ask us where we would like to put this. I've already downloaded this file. It's right here, so I'm going to cancel, but you would want to select Save. So while we're here, let's go ahead and click the Download SD Contents, and this page will pop up. And you see right here, I've already highlighted, we have the index of, so they're running an Apache server most likely, and it's got nightlies uh, for the SD card contents. Now, when you look through here, nothing really corresponds to the jumper T light. We see all these other radios, X7, X10 Express, we've got X lights, we've got all those. Which one do we need for the jumper T light? Well, we need the 128 by 64. That is the screen size of the jumper T light. So if we click that, we get this directory with all these different files. We want to select the most recent one, which is here. May 7th, 2021. So click and download that. Save those files. And if you have an SD card in your Jumper t light, you will need to take the contents of that zip file and unzip those onto the SD card. 
OpenTX does a check against the SD card to make sure it has the contents that are the appropriate version uh, for the OpenTX version. So we'll need that. Back here at the OpenTX Companion, we're done with all of our downloading. We've done our backups. We can click OK to get rid of this window. And now we're going to write firmware to the radio. Here's where we'd load up the most recent version, which is what I have already downloaded. So we open that up. You can see it does a version check here, and we've got a variant, we've got a time and date. Uh, if you wanted to do a uh, different splash screen, you can select one from your library. Uh, you can check this box for hardware compatibility. Probably a good thing to do. Now, we're going to do the write to TX, and this is going to take a moment. As you can see, we get a little green progress bar, and it's gonna slowly move forward as we work through the process of updating OpenTX onto our radio. At the very end, there will come an error, and it has this error. I believe it has this error regardless. I've never seen it not have this error. Don't worry, that's normal. Uh, we just click close and we go past that error. We don't have anything left to do in OpenTX. And here we go. Here at the end, it says, warning, file has no DFU suffix. It always says that. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it closed the connection to the USB port. I'm not quite certain, but I have never run this and not seen that particular error. Don't worry, just click close. So now we've updated OpenTX. Let's turn it on just to make sure we've got what we expect we've got. Now, see here on my radio, test warning. This is one of the annoyances with running a nightly. Now, if you look on the OpenTX website, it can tell you directly that the nightlies are not for flying. So, you're running test software, and OpenTX people say don't use it to flying, but for our purposes and what we're trying to accomplish in this video, we are running a nightly, and it is a test. So, every time we boot it up, we get this red light. We've got to press a button to go past that warning. You can see that my model file, I did not restore the model file. It did not overwrite them. It left them in place. Uh, we back those model files up, those model files up just in case something goes wrong. In order to do the next step, we need to go back to the computer. So here I'm on the Happy Model website, and what we need is the Lua script, and we're gonna put that on our SD card. So we have these links. Now this could be updated, and you need to make sure you've got the Lua script for the right piece of hardware. I think it's probably the same for both versions of the 2.4 gigahertz modules, but in case it happens to be slightly different, always check with the product page first. So we click the latest. We go ahead and open that up. Now that I've got this file downloaded, the ELRS, the Express LRS, I'm just gonna copy that. We're gonna go down here to our USB drive. That is the jumper T light, the radio itself. We're going to go to scripts, then tools, and here we're going to paste that file in. Paste. Now with our radio here, we go ahead and we're gonna unplug our USB-C and we're gonna power the radio off. And we're gonna power it back on. Welcome to OpenTX. Now I've got the Amber Sound Pack already on mine. You might not have that yet. We'll cover that here in just a minute. Here's our warning that we get every time we turn this off. This is one of the downsides of running the nightlies. And it's just kind of warning us, just like it did on the OpenTX website, that this is not for use for flying. But if we want that 500 hertz refresh packet rate, we have got to do this at this time. Uh, so we hit a button to get past that warning. We're going to go ahead and you see my model is already here. My model wasn't destroyed during the process, but we backed that up just in case. I'm going to long press the sys key in order to get into the uh, tools directory. And I'm going to go down until I see that script, ELRS right there. I'm going to hit enter. And you see here now it says 500 hertz and then above my thumb, hopefully you can see that, above my thumb, or I've moved my thumb now, Right there above my thumb, it shows zero, which is the bad packets. And then we've got 500, which is our, our packet refresh rate. And if I change that packet refresh rate, it should change as well. We see here it goes down to 250 if I select 250. So I'm going to go back up. Why not? I keep forgetting which way is up. 
go back up to 500, now we get zero, and it works its way up to 500. Of course, our power, and if you're wondering, if we hit that and we try to go even higher, it doesn't go any higher, it only goes lower. So at this time, 500 hertz is the fastest that OpenTX supports. And we can, of course, go down here, and we can change our milliwatt output, although I'm not certain it supports anything above 500 at this time. Oh, looks like it went back to 250. So that's that's the highest output that it supports. In my tests, I've been using 10 and 25 milliwatts if you've seen my previous videos. So we're essentially done with this. Now let me go ahead, just as a proof of concept, I'm gonna plug in my little quad here. I didn't rebind this. Get my radio off of that. See, so hopefully you can see that over there. I'm gonna do the return on this. We're gonna go back to the home screen. All right, wrong button. And I'm going to arm, disarm, arm, disarm. So it works. Now you've probably heard Amber hollering out and some of you are gonna say, hey, I want those sounds too. Well, again, we've gotta have an SD card. Presumably at this point, we have an SD card and we have the SD card contents on that card. So we're gonna go back to the desktop here and we're gonna go to the OpenTX University Amber Sound Pack. Now you'll note that it says version 2.2 .2 and we've got 2.3 on our radio. I've already verified this already works. So all we need to do is download this Amber 22 RAR file and you will need something like 7-zip, which is what I prefer to use to open this RAR file. It is a fairly sizable file, so you do need to wait uh, for it to download. You can see the little green bar on my Firefox is getting close to the end uh, before it opens up 7-zip for me. As you noted in the save dialog when I clicked the link to download the Amber 22 RAR file. And here we go. So now we have our sounds and we have English, and we have all those sounds. Look at all those sounds. So now all we have to do is, you can either take the SD card out of your radio and put it into a card reader and plug it directly into your computer. It's probably faster that way, but for the purposes of this video, I have plugged in my USB cord again, and I'm gonna go down to storage, I'm gonna hit enter. It opens the drive window for me. I'm gonna resize these a touch here. We're gonna go in here and we're gonna select them all. And we're going to put them in sounds, English, and I've already got these all, but for the purposes of a guest video, I'm doing it all over again for you. Now we get this dialog which says, hey, you've got these 700 and plus files. Do you want to skip these files, decide for each file? Ah, let's just go ahead and replace them. And ever so slowly, it's going to copy those 742 files back to this directory over here on my SD card that's still plugged into my radio. Again, you can take the SD card out and use a card reader. It's probably gonna move a lot faster for you using that method. OpenTX is now updated, so we can get that 500 hertz, that packet refresh rate, that, that juicy goodness that ExpressLRS brings and you may kind of think I got ahead of myself here a little bit because we haven't covered the module and updating the firmware on the module as well as binding. But we're gonna do that in the next video, presumably the next video. Video coming up shortly. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comments section below. By the way, if you're still don't know where to get ExpressLRS Happy Model Products, they'll be linked down in the video description. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.